You're welcome back and you're still watching News Nights. We're live from Nigeria's capital in Abuja. I'm Christian Nogodo. Thanks for staying with us. The valedictory speech delivered by Justice Musa Datijo Muhammad has continued to generate interest amongst lawyers and non-lawyers. He spoke so intensely about the decay in the judiciary and made a case for reforms. But will the judiciary heed the call? Let's have the discussion with the lawyer and the rights analyst, Frank Tietje Frank. I mean, it's really, you know, uh, raising a lot of dust. That Tiju's submission about how impoverished, so to speak, <laughs> the justices of the Supreme Court are. 750,000 naira a month you, for a justice? And you think Nigerians won't, will believe him? You really think Nigerians will believe him? Because if that's the true situation the judiciary faces, why I ha have they been keeping quiet that long? Before this discussion, you and I just saw the case, I mean, recall the case that was filed by Justice, I mean, uh, uh, Sebastian Horn, uh, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, and where the National Industrial Court actually ordered the increase of the salaries of Nigerian judges. And I'm not saying that uh, Justice uh, Datijo is not telling the truth because the situation before Sebastian Hoy and went to court mm. prior to when the National Industrial Court ordered the increase of Nigerian judges, well, the presumption was that even the Chief Justice of Nigeria was earning about 400,000 naira monthly. And I think that's ridiculous. And Datijo said that. It was very, very ridiculous. Uh, and the Chief Registrar but, but, so, so, earned 1.2 million. So, but, but why Nigerians who believe them is that why, why, did, why have they keeping quiet? You know, for me, I have looked at the Justice of the Supreme Court as persons who have been so divided among themselves, who haven't played the politics of uh, the judiciary very well to the extent that uh, it's affecting them. When it happened, you know, the moment it happened concerning um, the, uh, <coughs> what, uh, Justice, um, the, uh, just, justice um, uh, the justice that was sacked, I'm talking about, uh, uh, th there has been a, a lot of disagreements about them. Well, been, Nogen was uh, forced to retire. Yes, no, no, that's where the problem started. Well, yeah. just on Nogen. The idea is that <laughs> they, they have not stood together. They have not been together. They have not been able to pursue their cause. They've been at the mercy of the executive from the process of appointment through the management of the just uh, the judicial sector it shows that it is not of equal terms with the other arms of government but again importantly let nigerians know that the judiciary is not in any way immune from the politics of nigeria it's a it, 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 but the politics is taking so much toll on it and that's the reason why the justices have suffered and suffered in silence and more especially because the uh, you know the legal profession which gives birth to the judiciary actually thrives in uh, being conservative be, and yeah, so there's conservative no conservative and austere so, yes and so because i know lawyers are not uh, well paid to the uh, private but, lawyers but, 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 we've, but I'll, I'll, I'll send an example to you mm. you recall all that dramatic judge, Justice um, Olamide Oloye Day of Ocean State, mm. that dared to make some form of protest and wrote a petition against uh, uh, Arau Farah Bushola, uh, then, then governor, governor of Ocean of State, Ocean, yeah. and urged the uh, State House of Assembly to probe Arau Bushola concerning you know, state of affairs, the condition of the <laughs> judiciary. Uh, judges. Yeah, and what yeah. happened that she was punished? Mm. In fact, the NJC saw to her that she was sacked, she was removed. The same NJC reinstated her anyway. Now, look at the NJC again, uh, what uh, Justice. Uh, that T. Joe Mohammed pointed out again, one man wielding so much powers amongst the four uh, agencies under the judiciary. National <laughs> Judiciary Council, uh, Institute, National Judicial, Judicial Institute, Institute uh, the Legal uh, Practitioners Privileges uh, Committee, uh, and then the Federal And the Chief Justice Social. alone is the chairman of all this. How? I mean, within the judiciary, no, itself, no, see, see. how can, uh, you know, justice be expedited? Look, see, I, I, constitutional matters are very difficult to interrogate in such a simplistic manner. It's the constitution that said it to be so. It's not any 
uh, president or a chief justice that decided to arrogate those powers to himself. It is our constitution. That is the way we decided our system to be. Does that help the justice it system? Does not, it does not in any way. Because I recall, again, because I, 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 it causes me to, you know, it causes me some, you know, excitement to recall the trouble between former justice or chief justice of, the, of Nigeria, that is uh, Katsina Alu, and the president, former president of the Court of Appeal. Yeah. I'm talking about Ayo Salami, yeah. Justice Ayo, Ayo Salami. The chief justice of Nigeria versus the uh, president of the Court, Court of Appeal. Salami well, was promoted uh, to the Supreme was, no, Court, they, they, they look, and he said see, no. See, I, I, I tried, I, I've tried hard to explain that Nigerians fail to understand that judiciary has its politics, and the politics that go that goes on in the executive the actually inf affects and inflicts uh, on the judiciary. How do I say that? Just the, the undercurrents were that uh, it was said that Justice Kassina Alu wanted a certain, wanted Justice Ayo Salami not to preside over a particular case. It affected uh, uh, Wamako, then Governor Wamako also in uh, uh, Sokoto State at that time. But Ayo Salami was insisting as president that he wanted to sit. And then the best thing the, 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 the chief justice of Nigeria could do at that time was to say, okay, here, yeah, you, you are that you are promoted. You are, you are come, promoted. Come. <laughs> because he had the powers to do so. He was in charge of all of those, the NJC. So the NJC just decided, they said, look, this guy who is so powerful, bring him to the Supreme Court. Uh, so, so it's true that concentrating such powers in one man has not been helpful. Can be but, 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 again, but, but again, why is Justice uh, Datijo bringing this on, 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 at the point of his retirement? I mean, what would I expect? Like I wanted to point out in the case of uh, Justice Onogen, I recall that I, I would have expected Justice Datijo bringing up this kind of gusto in criticizing the system would have, with his colleagues, would have protested not to continue their work when Onogen on was chased out of uh, the office yes. in such a very you, ridiculous you, manner. Yeah, but, they, but they did against uh, Tanko. And Tanko recommended, uh, <laughs> retired the uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria, recommended six justices yes. to... Uh, former President uh, Buhari, but those names never saw the yeah, light you, of day. So now we are reduced half, you know, of the strength of the Let me tell you, court. is that not the politics? If Onoge was Chief Justice of Nigeria, would, would the constitution of the, electro, uh, the presidential election petition tribunal be the way it was? If Tanko was Chief Justice of Nigeria, would the constitution, would the constitution of the panel of the uh, election, presidential election tribunal be the way it was? You so see, it's a deliberate so, no, no, no. so it's strategic politics. People must understand that. So chase away the man you don't like and you don't, you are not, you are not sure of is uh, how he will constitute the panel, and that will determine the political fortunes of the entire uh, country or the political players. So it's about politics. So it's also strategic to ensure that certain persons of certain, uh, you know, geographic, or, no, no, geopolitical, geopolitical extractions are not appointed at this time in the Supreme Court so that you don't, you, you don't risk, you know, you know, the idea of whatever decisions they will take. So you have to be very, very circumspect in the way you manage. I'm talking about the political, uh, the, the, I mean, the Dynamics executive, yes, the, yeah. and, and that's the idea. So uh, Justice Datijo, for example, could have, would have, being Chief Justice of Nigeria, if there was not uh, Justice Ariola. So perhaps he was quiet all this while in the hope that uh, Justice Ariola would also be chased out in the way, uh, the way Onoga and even Tanko was for, were, were forced to retire. If that didn't happen. And I'm seeing much of his protestations at this time as uh, a, an expression of frustration. Nevertheless, we must thank Justice Datijo immensely because all of the things he said were correct. How does that sincerely help uh, judicial process, processes but in the dispensation of matters? He talked about the myriads, the volumes of cases before their lordships at the Supreme Court. My How would 10 people now be able to dispense their criminal cases, you know, uh, murder cases and the rest <laughs> and other civil cases? Some don't even have dates. Dates. Yes, I agree with you. Well, let us now look at uh, Jubilo Kotipa uh, wisely, sagaciously, brilliantly as give us the reasons why we had the dockets of, where we have the dockets of Nigeria, I mean, the Supreme Court full. It uh, showed the politics and all that. It's, just, it's a shame that our system cannot provide solutions, cannot address the problems that are facing, uh, facing it, especially when we know that the way we are operating will, uh, is not actually helpful to us. And that's a different thing entirely. 
However, I cannot emphasize enough the role politics plays in the management of the judiciary, particularly the Supreme Court. Now, it is expected that, you know, that I have um, of the view that we should reduce the technicalities and the demand for writing lengthy ju judgments to at least uh, as if judges want to prove to their colleagues that they are more brilliant in law than the others. So they pr put all sort of uh, unnecessary, you know, allusions into their judgments. That shouldn't be. As I'm looking forward to having a Supreme Court that should have a, most, a, a much simpler manner in the way they arrive at decisions and in the way they write their judgments. In that case, it really would not matter the, the number of uh, judges justice, we, ha justice we have at the Supreme Court. Court. However, but when you see, especially a large country, the largest country in Africa, the, I mean, I mean, and against the, the, the most bubbling country in Africa, having all sorts of things happening, you have just one Supreme Court hearing all the cases, cases that can flow from uh, even ordinary uh, customary uh, court, uh, yeah. and then we, we chief tenancy matters, every all sort of matters will go to the Supreme Court. And then, I like the way the, uh, Jubilo Okuteka has uh, mentioned the fact that he said, look, even for lawyers, they like to crowd the Supreme Court with cases because you, if you don't have a Supreme Court case, you will you not be appointed as a son, son, yeah. advocate of Nigeria. What, what, a, what a very flimsy basis of uh, determining who is uh, qualified. I mean, I mean, so as for the Supreme Court, the number of justices that is remain 10, which was highly decried by Justice Datijo, it was, a, it was a political strategy, and it appeared to have worked. Because there's no reason why Justice uh, Justice uh, HMB, Echo HMB, shouldn't have been replaced from the North Central. There is no reason why Justice Inyang Koro, or, or even Justice uh, uh, Weze, uh, Justice Weze, uh, late, Weze who, just, uh, who died uh, yeah. recently, should have been replaced. Southeast. But it serves the system, it serves the political interest of certain persons if the justices, if you don't temper with the current composition, you know, because if you do, by appointing a uh, daring to appoint 15 ju justices, or now approaching 20, to, and then you you are not so sure that you can control them, and then they give all sort of rulings, especially in this political dispensation. No, 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 no. That would be too much of a risk for those persons who hold the political ace cards in this country to, al to allow. And the current leadership of the Supreme Court is, appears to be at home and at peace. Because, by the way, it is the president that actually does the appointment. He looks around and then he selects the persons that will favor his interest. And by the way, we shouldn't shy away from that because we're looking, at, we're considering it as if it's surprising. The, the people we copied a presidential federalism from, I take it for granted that the president looks out only for persons who will serve his interest and appoint such persons to the Supreme Court. It is not, uh, we, we shouldn't think that there is this idea of a uh, National Judicial Council will now take select three names and send to the pre president will take one, or in the case of Onoge, they forced him to appoint one. The the way they forced him, you saw the way he humiliated and chased Ono out of uh, uh, the, uh, the leadership of the Supreme Court with the uh, with, with an affidavit deposed to by one fellow, and then with uh, with an expert application. The expert application. I didn't expect from that moment. I expected all the justices of the Supreme Court to know that they, 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 they you know, they, they, I mean, they exist at the mercy of the president. I didn't expect that they would continue. They would have protested and said they would not. They are they are they are brothers in uh, the justice in Pakistan at the time, stood up against uh, uh, Pervers, Pervers Musharraf, and they said we're not con continuing. But, you see, that's why I blame, and I don't pity much of this uh, cry coming from Justice Zatiju, because they, as an activist judge that he now appears at his retirement, he should have said, look, I will not tolerate this against the Nogue. I will also not tolerate this against Tanko. Tanko was practically chased out. And the same way Onoge was chased out. Who now benefited? It's uh, Justice Arewola. To, for what cause? And, 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 and then, why uh, the, the, the same, did they offer that kind of protection? Or did they also hold uh, Justice Arewola to such scrutiny that he is now advocating? If they did, perhaps he would have enjoyed a bit of some, uh, uh, you know, I would say, a better uh, standard yeah, of service uh, before uh, leaving. Uh, but, but, let us also consider what uh, uh, Sebastian Hoyer has done by obtaining an order of court, increasing the salary of the chief justice to 10 million naira. Yeah. Why is it taking so long? But you see, let us also understand that Justice Datiju has raised the issue and said, What happens to the big budget that goes to the judiciary, who were controlled by the chief justice of Nigeria? Why is it that uh, it doesn't trickle down to them? You know, then the real issue now comes up. If, according to Justice Datijo, why would I write a brilliant judgment if I'm burdened about my son's school fees? And would it not be difficult for me 
not to collect a bribe of 50 million naira if I just simply say yes or no. So these are the issues, and I like the fact that Justice that, uh, that Joe, even though unfortunately he's coming late, he is able to courageously say these things and shows the need for an urgent overhaul of the justice delivery system in our country, particularly in terms of integrity and the high rise, uh, high rate of corruption that are being that is being associated with it. I, I would say. Well, thank you so very much, uh, Frank Chete, a lawyer and the Arise analyst. The gospel there must be saluted of uh, Justice Datijo Mohammed. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. <laughs>